God bless you. Hey, this is the time and this is the season right now. And I just thank God for this opportunity once again to be in your home and to be in your life. So right now, I just want you to be encouraged. Get on the phone, call your neighbor, call your friend, call somebody and tell them about what's fixing to happen. Because God has got something just for you. And every one of you that's here listening over the radio, internet, Bless God, satellite, it don't make no difference. I know this one thing. If a man can believe God this day, all things are possible to them that truly, truly believe. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to give you a couple songs. Of, and I know that God is in this thing, and I know God is with me. So... This is a song that was about a lady that out on the island and she had been blind for 30 years, all her life. So God gave her her miracle and it's a true story and God knows. In a little town now, there was out by the sea. There lived a blind lady, yet blind as could be. Blind Maggie she was, she was the blind of the town. Everybody knew where blind Maggie lived. Blind Maggie had been blind for 30 long years. Like blind Barnabas, blind Maggie can see. As Jesus was home, that Jericho road. Like a blind, blind man, you know she crying out so. Blind Maggie, she cried. She cried the same after me. Like a blind, blind man, blind Maggie can see. As Jesus was on that Jericho road, like blind blind mess, oh my Lord, you know she cried out so. Blind Maggie, she cried. She cried the same man after me. Like blind, blind man, blind Maggie can see. After praying all day, like the Lord told me, in that little town, a miracle happened, you see. A miracle happened down Blind Maggie Street. Like Blind Blind Man, Blind Maggie can see. As he's up alone, the Jericho Road. Like blind, blind man, you know she cried out so. Blind Maggie, she cried. 
She cried the same after me Like blind, blind mouth Blind Maggie can see Oh, yeah Thank you, Lord, and his anointing. So what I want you to do is just kind of get focused on the kingdom of God with me. Let me wipe my mouth, get all this stuff cleared up, get everything ready. But I want you to go with me into the book of Malachi, the third chapter. And we're talking about the days that Jesus Christ has come. And it's already here. But he said in his word that in these last days, said God, I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And, and I'm looking at these last days that we're living in right now, that God's getting ready to pour out upon us such an outpouring of the Holy Ghost like the world has never seen before. And the vision that he's given his people. You know, there, there's a lot of people that God is raising up in this time and in this hour and, and we're at the door right now of one of the greatest moves of God in the midst of all of the calamities and all of the destruction. If the people that would, that's called by his name would humble themselves and turn from their wickedness and turn back to God and, and we're going to hear from heaven, we'll see the, the real manifestation of the spirit of God. Man, I, I'm not wanting to get up here and half talk and half cock and come at you with any kind of old thing, but I'm bringing you the word that the word is bringing us into the new dispensation of the time of Christ to where that the fullness of the Godhead bodily would be manifested. So before I get excited and get started, let us go to prayer. And I want you to pray with me because see tonight or uh, right now at this moment, I'm believing God for what he said. And therefore, I believe his word for exactly what he's saying, that he is in this thing. He's in the midst of it. So we glorify him. I decrease that his spirit might increase. So I'm going to pray and, 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 and sanctify this, that I can speak the words without anything in my life or in my past or anything else infiltrating or polluting the gospel of the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus I come to you at this moment, and I believe, Father, out of all your servants, I humble myself, and I'm the least. And, Father, I totally put my trust and my confidence in your word and upon your kingdom. Lord, your kingdom is come that your will might be done in earth. I'm asking you to fill me with your spirit and your anointing. Let the power of the Holy Ghost, go through these airways. God, every way in and every way out, I believe without a shadow of a doubt right now, God, that your spirit is with me and the anointing of the Holy Ghost is upon me. The spirit of the Lord that has anointed me to preach this gospel is in full assurance and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us, nor will it stop the working of the kingdom of God. Holy is the Lord of hosts. And I humble myself, O Lord. For this hour, dear Lord, that you give me, I dedicate every minute, every second, every moment to preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Turn loose upon us the real manifestation of your spirit. Oh God, I see the gloom and doom, but right now, Lord, I see the victory in everything that we set out to do. In Jesus' name, them that's watching, them that's got ears to hear, I command the devil to move his hands back, them that got eyes to see. I command every demonic force to loose and take his hands off of the eyes of this people. And now, Lord, let the Holy Ghost and the realness in the realness, in the realness of your spirit. Lord, not my fixation, not religion, tradition, or doctrine, but right now, Lord, in Jesus' name, take me into that place to where I can speak the words as holy and pure and clean. Thank you, O Lord, for this day that you have sanctified and this day that you have made whole. I remember forever 
the graciousness and the greatness that you have torn, thrown upon us and allowed us, Lord, to see and to respect. And I honor you with the greatness of your mercy. Thank you, God. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for caring your life that you hung on Calvary and died for us. Thank you, Jesus. And right now, when I get ready to go into this word, you know what? The spirit of the Lord, uh, I just feel inside of me a uh, 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 reaching like a magnet that's reaching to pull God's people in. Some of you that's right now that's thinking about suicide, you're thinking about ending it all. But I'm telling you what, that's not the end of it. You might take your life, but that's the beginning of sorrows forever through eternity. And if you destroy the temple, God will destroy you. Come on, it, it, there is an answer. There's a solution. Jesus is the answer for this world today. And if you got a problem, he'll fix it. If you can believe upon him and he will make you whole. A lot of people are not preaching the real Christ, the anointing that break the yoke and destroys it. I mean, he totally, I mean, annihilated, tear it to pieces, burn it up. It will be nothing ever again. You know, when you put it in the fire, you can't put it back together after it go through the fire because it's totally done away with and it exists no more. Ain't that the way God worked when he loved you and he get rid of your sins? He throw that stuff in the fire and it exists no more. So now stop resisting the spirit of God that's tugging at your heart because he do. He love you. He care about you. He understand what the weakness of the flesh is and what the weakness of man is. And he understand that right now at this time, if thou would turn the heart to him, if you confess with your mouth and believe in the heart, thou shall be saved. I feel the spirit of God right now is tugging at somebody. Hallelujah, that the spirit of God is reaching somebody's heart at this moment. Somebody's ready to give your heart to the Lord. Man, I got to follow the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Somebody at this moment is tired. Somebody didn't went through enough and you didn't say it in your heart. I've had enough of this stuff. I've lived in sin long enough. I want some peace. I want some joy. I want some happiness. But Jesus Christ right now is ready to reach out. Oh, glory right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I I reach into your heart and I break loose the chain. Oh, I feel the anointing. I feel that Holy Ghost just flowing. You can feel the anointing over the TV right now. You, you know that this is real. You know that the spirit of God that lives in me, as I confess, he lives in me. Great is he that is that lives in you than he that is in the world for the kingdom of heaven. It's at hand. And God finna do something great in America. He told me, he said, don't, don't speak a word against your country. Don't speak a word against this country right now. We still send messengers around the world. You still send in monies and support to missionaries. And God is honoring that because this door of reaching out to the harvest of souls is is there and God is going to bless America for getting the gospel out to the rest of the world. Don't stop supporting. Don't stop giving. Don't stop doing. We got to get it. But I am going to stay in America and I'm going to get around the country side in every little hole, every little crevice, every little thing. But Lord, I want the Holy Ghost to just take this thing over. We're going to hit Arkansas like a storm. We're going to hit Missouri. We're going to hit Alabama, Louisiana. We're going to reach the harbor of the soul. The harvest is right, but the laborers are so few. But let me get in the word here and just bear with me. Uh, Malachi 3 and 1. We're talking about the messenger that he's sending and he's already sent. Now the messenger, which was John the Baptist, our baptizer at this time. And when John came to the point of baptizing Jesus and he looked up and he saw the son of God in whom he said, I'm not worthy to unleash his shoes, but he shall come after me and he's going to baptize you in the fire and in the Holy Ghost. But before we get to this point, listen at this here. 
He said, behold, I send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, said the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming and who, who can stand with his when he appear? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a, a laundry of soap. And he will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Now, what I want to do is break this down because, see, the messenger and the forerunner of Christ was John the baptizer. And as John began to go forth and baptize them for the remission of their sins, but the one that's coming is going to purge you of your sins and totally eradicate and do away with iniquities as well so as your sins. So the iniquities is the things that's passed on down the blood generation that give the devil rights to come into that household or that bloodline and do what he do. But once you are born again of the spirit of God, you baptize in his death, his burial and his resurrection. And it eliminate anything that the son of prediction or the evil one would have hope to. So totally, I am totally eliminated from the curse and the things that has fallen upon this generation. Even the stuff that came through the bloodline by which I was born. Jesus Christ is the purifier that purify our blood for the blood of the lamb that redeem us. We've been redeemed from the curse of the world and the curse of all of this evil stuff. But the messenger has come. Well, he has sent us. He said them that I send the works that I do. So shall ye do and greater. So now as a forerunner of what's fixing to take place and the latter rain. And uh, in other words, the latter outpouring of the Holy Ghost in double portion upon this latter house. That's going to be greater than the former house. And we are getting ready to see what God has in store for us. See, your eyes hadn't seen, neither have your ears heard. And it does not yet appear what we shall be but when Jesus Christ has poured out upon us the comforter whoa, we're going to be like him my God the things that Jesus done you shall do it with all confidence with at all ease brother God laying on of hands ain't going to be nothing but what it's going to amount to is this you speak the word because the word of God that's in your mouth is God and as God speak through you now you believe God's word like this like God believe his word and on this level all things are possible that leave nothing that anything could slip by with out the word of God being spoken over it. And when you begin to teach and preach and speak the word and the word of God make you into the messenger of the forerunner of the coming in this latter reign, this latter house, you're going to see great things greater than the world has ever seen. All these little magic tricks and these little fellas levitating and walking on water and floating around and, and the illusion of doing this and doing that and causing tricks and, 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 and little things. Well, they're coming in all fashion. There are those that's coming in the name of Jesus, but the spirit of God that's inside of you will quicken your spirit that you would know and you will not be deceived by trickery and the mockering of this evil demonic force. Oh, it come in a mockery. And bless God, people come out and they want to do it. Even when Moses came, bless God, to the king's house. And Pharaoh and Moses laid his rod down. 
and it became a serpent. Then you got two other tricksters that came in and laid theirs down. But what did God do? The greater power always consumed the less and it just ate their little snakes up. And, and I'm telling you one thing, God, hallelujah, is fixing to take us through all of the curses that's coming upon this generation and upon this nation because of the wages of sin and because of the evil that's out here now, because of the false prophets, the false pretenders in them that's gone to do magical tricks to get you to think that it's God. But when the Spirit of God comes, He purges your heart and you don't want to have a part in doing evil or being evil or mistreating or, or hating one another. You want your house to be a house that the soul would be satisfied because that that I do for the kingdom of God will cause my mind to be elevated above my circumstances. And here you are right now knowing that the messenger is here to prophesy and to bring forth the revelation of Jesus Christ. Bring forth the manifestation of them that's born into this. Oh, glory. You got to be born again. And if you ain't born into it, you won't even see it. It'll be so easy for you to be deceived by, by, by any kind of form or fashion, any kind of religious attribute. Now what we're doing right now, God is getting ready to elevate your mind above things in this present world. And all this little junk you see on TV, we see the mega churches, we see the big houses, we see them that won't stand up against sin and won't preach against it. Bless God, but you got to understand that everything everything that Jesus done. He done it in love and he done it in the full assurance of knowing that God has given us power and given us authority in earth as it is in heaven that men might know which way is right and which way is wrong. Oh, come on somebody. Don't, don't shut me out now. I'm telling you right now Jesus Christ, the son of the living God is king of glory. He is the Lord, and he's coming back. He's going to judge this world. But oh my, he shall not. He's going to judge it. He's going to, but God and everything that's not right and not up to where it's supposed to be, and your name is not written in the Lamb Book of Life, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone along with the false prophets and, and all these other devils that will not Take down and all of you religious bureaucratic people that set in your way and you think you're the only one that's got it. I'm not the only one that's out here crying out against sin and I'm not going to be the only one that walk on the streets of gold. It's going to be those that has totally denied themselves and turned from your wicked ways and turned back to God through Jesus Christ. You know him. Oh, <laughs> My God, look at the Spirit of God, for he's upon me right now. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is upon me. I, I feel something is about to happen and about to break in this country and in this nation. People are getting ready to see one of the greatest moves of God. But the messenger has already come and declared that the kingdom has come. When Jesus came out of the wilderness after being baptized, he said, the kingdom is come. And it come in power and in demonstration. He didn't come to play games with the devil, but he came taking authority. He came back. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And everything, Satan, you think you got, you done already lost your rights to it. Why? Because we being purged. And what used to be in my bloodline is there no more. I have the bloodline of the Father. And he that created me in his image and in his likeness. Now he lives in me. But God, he's in my blood. He's in my mind. He's in my heart. The temple of God that suddenly he shall come to and he's going to fill his temple. He's going to come back. He's coming. And I ain't talking about coming back to rapture you out of here. He's coming back and he's going to fill us up and we're going to take this old world and it's going to be shaken for the kingdom of God and then after the gospel is preached all over the world and the kingdom message is received and then the coming of the Lord. He didn't say nothing about a rapture. He's coming back to judge the quick and the dead and this is it. This is the second coming of the Lord that when he come, he's coming in righteousness. When he come, he's coming in the beauty of holiness high and lifted up 
nothing above him, nothing beneath him. They're going to be, bless God, anointed by him. And you're going to see, bless God, that this thing that I'm preaching is not a joke or a game. But he's coming back in the cloud with witness. He's going to bring all of you, your folks that died in Jesus Christ and them that died in hope, believing that the Messiah has come. He has come. He descended, all oh, bless God, from heaven, hallelujah, and landed on earth and died on the cross. And then he ascended on further into the pitch of hell. And them that was held captive had believed on the coming of the Lord, had believed the gospel that the Messiah was coming, that new king, and he that's over the new blood covenant, that his blood is redeemed by man. Oh, the man of God, his blood that Jesus Christ has redeemed us by. Now here you are. Bless God, I've been redeemed by the blood. I have no sin in me. I have no grief in me. There's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. But bless God, you're going to sit right here and you know that your God has sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross and you still want to go back under the old law. You still want to go back and do those old traditional things. You want to do like the Jews do. Go ahead, baby. I ain't got to worry about all that stuff because Jesus Christ is my Sabbath. Jesus Christ is my Passover and in him I am set free from all your religion, your tradition and your doctrine. Hallelujah. We're not under the law. You ain't got to sacrifice a bug or a sheep or a cow or a goat. Jesus became that ultimate sacrifice that I am the way, the truth, and the light. And if any man get to the Father, he's got to go through the Son. Clarify our minds, God, that we will not fail you. That it will not be that people would fall and fall evil. Pray to the devil. Not no more. You can hear this gospel. And you can hear me preaching this by the word, by the spirit that inspire you, that gets you going, that gets you motivated for the hours come right now. You, you got to repent of your sins. Come on, somebody. I know they're telling you that it's all right. You can mix a little good and bad together and come out all right. It's not all right. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. You need to turn yourself around. You need to repent and forgive. You need to let go of the things of the world. Come out of the world. Come out of this stuff that's so easy to upset you and mess your walk up with God. The messenger has come. He's going to purge us. He's going to purify us. What do you think happened on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost came in like a rushing mighty wind and it set upon each of them like fire. They was being purged totally of all of their sins and they came out speaking another language. Good God Almighty, what you think's going on? You got people now, they ain't speaking another language. They, they, they heard somebody else going, get blah, 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 blah. And they, that's all they're doing. They're full of stuff. They're full of mess. They're full of evil. They're full of conce conceited inside. And bless God, they won't allow the, the blood of Jesus to purge their hearts and become godless sorrow. And you set up there with things in your heart and you know it's time for you to repent. To him that know to do good and do it not, it is a sin. And if you die thinking just because I said I'm going to forgive him and you did not return back to your brother or sister and ask them for your forgiveness and let them know that there's a change. You'll die in your sins. And he's going to say, well, uh, who did hinder you that you didn't obey the truth? What is the truth? My word is the truth. I told you how to handle that thing before you even got here to this point. God had already told us if you ain't going to forgive one another, your heavenly father will not forgive you. If you sit around here with chips on your shoulders and your attitude, but God, you act in every kind of damnable way. Who in the world you think you are? You're no better than anybody else. If he did not spare the angels that fall and left their state, how much more? Because the wages of sin is death. And a lot of folks think, well, I cast out devils in your name. It don't matter if you cast out devils, if you was the biggest devil hunter in the world. 
But if your heart is not right and you haven't been purged by the blood of Jesus Christ, that you are totally redeemed from sins and iniquities because no sin is going to enter in. And you sit there and act like you missed it and, and bless God, you've got it all wrapped around your little finger. I got news for you, church mothers, church fathers. I'm telling you one thing. You think that you are in control of something? No, you ain't. You fixing to fail. You fixing to fall flat on your face because sin is still sin. And the wages of it is death. But if you don't turn and repent and ask God to come in your heart, you ain't saved. Listen here.